Okay. Saying that Keir Starmer is one of the unluckiest heads of government on the planet might sound somewhat counterintuitive. After all, the election of the Labour Party out of such a tiny proportion of the voting population must seem like a colossal stroke of luck. But there's a saying, you know, that one about whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. And if that's a true prophecy, well, I haven't seen many governments madder than the one Starmer is running right now. I'm Granny Opterix. I'm on YouTube, Rumble, Bitchute and Minds. So, while you watch the uh, movie behind me showing the, the sort of people who were on the march, let's look at the facts. This present Labour administration is going to destroy the Labour Party for at least the next election. And actually, I honestly believe that it's a bit of a toss up whether the Labour Party will recover at all. The way they're acting now, it does rather seem that their place in the British political ecology will be taken over by the Reform Party. That's uh, my reason for thinking that is because the one abiding and unchanging characteristic about socialism, or yeah, perhaps I should more be talking about the sort of people who embrace socialism, is that it or its acolytes don't seem to understand history too well. Even those with the smallest grasp of British political history should know what happened to the Liberal Party in the early part of the 20th century. The Liberal Party was a giant in the 19th century. It was the party of Gladstone and Asquith. It, it seemed there'd be no stopping it. But it was completely destroyed when Lloyd George put a tax on, yeah, you guessed it, agricultural land. Well, you can't see how many people, uh, this bit of it, but it's a lot. And uh, you can't just up and out of your farm and go on a day's jaunt, you know. Someone has to look after the animals. And the fact that they got so many people out here says a lot. But do you think our Labour Party will take any notice of them? Yeah, no. Of course they won't. They didn't take any notice of the, oh gosh, it's, it's reception wasn't good on that, uh, on that, uh, in that area at that time. I wonder why. Anyway, uh, the, uh, the Labour Party didn't take any notice of the hundreds of thousands who turned up on the countryside marches. Um, when was that? That was, oh gosh, 20 years ago, uh, something like that anyway. But they didn't take any notice then and they won't take any notice now. And they won't take any notice of all these people in villages swamped by military age Muslim illegal aliens either. But it won't be just the farmers voting for reform next time instead of Labour. It will be all the people in the villages whose jobs depend on farming and all those people who've had to take to driving their daughters to their village hall ballet classes because it's not safe for an unaccompanied girl to walk there anymore. They won't vote Conservative because the Conservatives weren't acting much better. No, it'll be reform and it will be a tide, just like the tide that swept Labour into government after the Liberal Party mucked up in the early 1900s. In 1906, the Liberal Party had 400 MPs in the House of Commons, which is very similar to the number the Labour Party has now. But in the 1924 election, they had only 40 MPs and they've never recovered. Their place was taken by the newly formed Labour Party, which was just waiting for the opportunity. And now I rather think that the same thing is going to happen to the Labour Party as happened to the Liberals, this time with, as I said, the Reform Party taking their place. And it started when Lloyd George decided to do some social engineering. He called it redistributive taxation and referred to his tax programme as a war budget. 
That is, he was waging a war against poverty. And ironically enough, one of the taxes was a land tax which hit the larger states particularly hard. Ah, it was only going to hit rich people, but it hit a lot of mid-sized farms quite badly as well. And it started a decline in British agriculture. By the time World War II was going to start, it was estimated that British farming could supply only one third of the food required for the population. Of course, the panicking government urged farmers to plough up every square inch of spare land. They even ploughed up the footpaths uh, temporarily, of course, and sometimes that temporarily is uh, going on today. But that's another matter. Uh, and um, one minister, I remember really, I couldn't find it, but one minister made a groveling speech to farmers apologising for how they'd been treated. And, he, and the entire government swore on their mother's graves never to do that again. Of course, we all know what happened to that promise. Because you see, there's nothing a government likes better than aiming for a sitting target. And you don't get much more of a sitting target than a farm. And no one in the government, or, or indeed in the Labour Party as a whole, seems to have learnt from the experience of the Liberals. They have the idea that being socialists, uh, it's just sort of God-given, or, well, they probably don't believe in God, but you know what I mean. Uh, they, they don't realise it's not God-given or anything else given. It's all very well saying you're fighting a war against poverty, but when you're driving great chunks of the British economy into poverty in the first place, this causes a certain loss of support from your backers. That's why I can fairly confidently predict that Labour will end up, like the Liberal Party, as a fringe activist movement, which is what it's now Anyway, the only problem now is that, unfortunately, it's a fringe activist movement uh, that has, by accident, and the incompetence of the Conservatives, for which I will not forgive them, by the way, and the incompetence of the Conservatives, Labour got handed a parliamentary majority. So, Der Sturmer has already made 11 foreign visits since he became Prime Minister, Obviously, he finds foreign conferences easier to deal with than the cats in a sack of his own party and the nuts and bolts issues in Parliament. But our dear leader thinks that he's going to cement a legacy for himself, doesn't he, by making a lot of foreign agreements with people we don't like. He is sadly mistaken. I think his legacy is going to be as the last Labour Prime Minister ever. All right, till next time. You can help my channel by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. That's quite important. And by sharing if you're so inclined. Links to my other channels and to donation methods are in the description. But the best way you can help is simply by clicking like and notify. Thank you.